Okay, so for our next job, we are going to have to find some credit card numbers from a garbage collection system. Uh, and something that I thought was really cool about this one is that the algorithm that we're going to be using to determine whether a credit card number is valid or not is actually the algorithm that is used in some places to validate credit card numbers. Once again, I gotta be able to hear myself talk. Um, it's, so it's actually the algorithm that's used. And I saw a post about it like the day after I had done this job for the very first time. And I thought that was, that's super cool. So uh, enough being a geek, here's what's gonna happen. Uh, the file that we're trying to read from, the garbage file that we're reading from is file 199. So I'm gonna send execution agent A over to file 199. And he's just gonna start uh, reading values out. And you'll see the file has a bunch of numbers in it, and then there's a few minus, uh, like minus 10,000s basically. Uh, whenever we see a value like this, we can assume that that is that is basically a break. That is basically no. There are going to be no valid credit card numbers that are going to contain this value. So I'm looking for a 16-digit sequence uh, that doesn't contain any of these minus 10,000s in them. Uh, and so XB is going to be the, the main one who's going to help us calculate these kinds of things. So XB has copied 16 into his X register. Uh, we need to save the T register for some comparison, so we're going to use the X register for counting. Uh, and he's created a blank file. The blank file is going to contain our digits. So the first thing that XB is going to do is it's going to pull digits from XA. Uh, every digit that it pulls in, it's going to go back, reread it, and make sure that it's not one of these minus 10,000s, because if it is, we know that we are basically uh, dealing with junk. But since this one is a 3, uh, we can continue going on. We'll subtract 1 from our X, because we need to get 16 total digits, and then we'll check and see have we gotten 16 digits. So we'll continue until we either hit get a minus 10,000 or until we get 16 digits. Uh, and the first thing that will happen will probably be the minus. Okay, here comes the minus 10,000 across now. And XB is going to see, oh, I got a minus 10,000. What I'm going to do in response to that is I'm going to go back to the beginning of my file and reset X. Now I'm basically just going to, I basically just started over. I, I don't need to wipe the file at all because I'm just going to be overriding the values as I go. So now we're going to keep going. Uh, getting new values in until, once again, we either get a minus 10,000 or until x becomes zero. And it looks like it's going to get to x equals zero this time. So here's what happens. We go back to the beginning of the file and the algorithm that we basically have to do, I should probably actually just bring up my notes for this one, uh, is here. So you have your raw digits in your 16 digit sequence here. Let me make this a little bigger for you as well. So you have your raw digits here. You will double all of the odd digits. So the first, third, fifth will all need to be doubled. And if um, the value of that doubling is greater than nine, you subtract nine from it. So 16 is greater than nine, 16 minus nine, seven. But let's say, uh, uh, let's see. Another example that's not eight, please. Here, well, here's five. Five doubled is 10. 10 is greater than nine, subtract nine is one. Uh, if it was a six, six plus, uh, would double to be 12, and then minus nine would be three. Uh, but since that's an even one, that's not the case. So this is what it is after you've doubled and subtract nine if nine. Then you calculate the sum of all those values, and you take a look at the last digit of the sum. If that last digit is a zero, then you have in front of yourself a valid credit card number. Uh, and that's what we're looking for. So what we're going to do back in our code here is we're now gonna go through and calculate those steps for the number that we currently have written down here, this 16 digit sequence we have. So the first thing that I, I do is I check to see if the number is less than five uh, for the odds. Uh, because if it's less than five, then I'm not gonna have to do the subtract nine step of it. Uh, so eight is not less than nine. So I'm going to have multiply eight by two. We're gonna save that in my T register. So that's 16. I'm gonna subtract nine from it. And then I'm gonna add T into X. And then I'm gonna add just the next digit because it's an even. We don't have to double it or anything right into X. We've now done one of our 
uh, our steps here. Sorry, that's an alarm. The next thing that we'll do is check and see if we're at the end of the file. We're not. Uh, so then we're going to go back again. The next digit is a five. Five is not less than five, so it's going to end up getting doubled to ten, stored in the T register. Subtract nine, that's a one. And we add the one, and we add the next one, which is a two, into the X register. Our total is currently 17. Ta check for the end of the file again. Nope. Okay. Seven, not less than five. Going to get doubled to 14. Subtract nine for five, and there you go. Let me do this until we get a value that's less than five. Uh, okay, here, we got two. Two is less than five. So all we're gonna do for that one is multiply by two to get four. And we're gonna jump over and we're just gonna add that four. We're not gonna subtract nine. So that adds uh, four to make it 62. And then we add the even. Then once we get to the end of the file, which we have now, we have our total sum, which is 72. But remember, we need the last digit to be zero. So to check that, I do mod i of x by 10, and I'm storing the result in the T register. What this will mean is T will end up with basically the last digit. I could have, I could also just change this line here. I just did mod I, I did a mod modulo operation here. I could have easily done a Swiss operation to grab the last digit. They're do the same thing. But basically I have the last digit that ends up in T. And since I only want to do something different if T is zero, I can do just some logic there. So F jump would mean that t is zero, which means we're done, so I would jump to this halt condition. Since it's not, what I'm going to end up doing, in order to avoid having to basically rewrite the whole number, we just want to now like shift our whole number sequence over. Because remember, take a look at this section of numbers that uh, execution agent A is reading. We're at 16 digits here. Uh, but the 16 digit number might not start with the eight. It might start at the seven or the five or the two here. Instead of having to go all the way back and rereading all of them, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume, okay, this eight might not be part of the number. So I'm gonna jump back and remove that eight from my number and go back and say, give me another number. So I'm gonna add one to X. So th and then I'm going to go back to my read numbers. We now basically have simulated ourselves to be back in a situation when we're reading the numbers where we just need one more number to come in from execution agent A. And that's what we'll do. We'll get another number from A, subtract one from X here to make it down to zero. Um, we also check to make sure it wasn't minus 10,000. And because it is, then we end up going and we do the whole calculation over again. Now is this a valid credit card number? Uh, and it is going to end up probably not being, yeah, this one is 95, which is not divisible by 10. Uh, and so we'll say, okay, give me a new number instead. And we'll calculate that one as well. And this will continue until uh, we actually end up getting another 10,000 value from uh, execution agent A. When that comes in, we need to basically start at the beginning. I set X back to 16, keep giving me more numbers. And this is going to keep going for a while. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to skip ahead to another time where I check to see is my sum uh, divisible by 10. This time, the sum that we got from the, the numbers was 56. No, 115. No, 90. Aha. This one's divisible by 10. That means what we have in here should be a valid credit card number. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll drop our file because that's the end condition and now we need to basically stop execution agent A because A doesn't have any idea when it's actually done reading the file and B isn't going to read any more from it. So what B is going to do is B is just going to jump over there to where A is and run a kill condition, a, a kill command, and it will also halt itself in the same process. And that is that will give us our solution. So the big part of trying to save time in this one is whenever you see the minus 10,000, you can basically s reset your whole calculation for one. And then for two, when you have a sequence of numbers that's greater than 16, you don't need to go all the way back and like re send over all of those 15 digits that are the same. You just need to remove the first one and then tack a new one on the end and then restart your calculation. And this continues until XB finds a valid credit card number. And there you go. I'm gonna I'm gonna let this run. It does it does take a second to run, but uh, this was a really cool one for the the logic of the credit card number. I was really happy to see it. 
and you'll see that uh, my performance on this one is also pretty dang nice. I got, not only did I get the cycles down pretty low, but I also got the size down pretty low, so I was pretty happy to see that. Uh, yeah, that one was one of the more interesting jobs, I'd say, in the whole game for me.